Welcome to the Truth Unfolds Bible Study. The topic for today is how to study the Bible and what does truth have to do with it. In this presentation, I hope to provide answers to the following questions. Is there a difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible? Does it matter to God how we understand the Bible? How can we gain the approval of God when we study His Word? And this next question is the center of what we will discuss today. Does it have an effect on your life if you embrace false doctrines deliberately or deceived? This will be very interesting, so stay tuned. Question. What is the first thing you should do before you open the Bible? First and foremost, you should always pray before you open God's Word and ask Him to show you what is truth and also to give you the desire to follow His Word once you are convicted of truth. You may ask, what is the purpose of praying before reading the Bible? The reason prayer should be offered is because it is an act of humility. It is an acknowledgement of God's divinity as opposed to our frail humanity. It is a recognition of our dependency on His Spirit to explain the sacred oracles. It is being cognizant that the principles you are about to read are divinely inspired, and with all the wisdom of man combined, humanity still cannot comprehend the simplicity of infinite wisdom documented in Holy Scriptures. A failure to have the appropriate attitude is one of the biggest reasons why many who open the pages of the Bible cannot find nor discern the treasures of truth. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 10 outlined the best way to study the Bible. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. This scripture is describing an investigation. There is a difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible. When you are studying the Bible, the best method is to study by topic. Studying by topic means you will search for all the scriptures, as many as you can find, that are connected to a particular topic and see whether the topic is supported by God's word or not. This type of study is called systematic Bible study. Why is systematic Bible study important? It is crucial because the way the Bible is divinely constructed, you cannot build a doctrine from one scripture. Why not? Because God in his wisdom knew that it would have left way too much room to manipulate and interpret scripture to say whatever the reader wants it to say. In order for Bible truth to be established, a doctrine must pass the scrutiny of the entire Bible, Old and New Testament, and must be in harmony with its principles. If it is to be considered Bible truth, and pay attention to the word considered, not because someone presents multiple scriptures for a particular topic automatically means their claims to Bible truth are valid. This is why I love Proverbs 18 verse 17. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. In other words, the first to plead his case seems right until another comes and cross-examines him. I believe it is with this mindset we should approach testing claims of truth, meaning we must cross-examine everything and everyone who claims to speak 
teach, write, or claim to have visions and dreams all in the name of God. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. A lot of people claim that God speaks through them. If God has truly spoken to a person, it must be in harmony with his word. That simply means, and this is very important, it simply means that the Bible and the Bible only is the standard and rule of faith for a Christian. If any teaching, however sincere the person may be, or however convincing it may sound, if it is not in harmony with God's word, as Bible-believing Christians, we must respectfully reject it. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Did you know, being deceived does not nullify the consequences of your actions? Case in point, Eve told God that it was the serpent who deceived her, right? Question, did God turn a blind eye or remit the consequences because Eve was deceived? No, he did not. And why not? Because deception does not cancel the consequences when the truth is known or could have been known. So, we cannot use the excuse that this one or that one deceived me. For this reason, the Bible is available to all, so that all may have an understanding of the truth for themselves. This is the reason why we must take our Bible study seriously. Because if you end up lost, God forbid, you cannot blame a soul. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Question. What type of person will benefit the most from studying the Bible? It is a person who does not make excuses in the face of evidence. And facts carry more weight than feelings. And a sense of duty to stand for the right though the heavens may fall. Any person that fits those criteria is a person who will be very successful in their pursuit of rightly understanding the Bible and the character of God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. According to this scripture, how can we receive the approval of God? Is it not by rightly understanding the scriptures? A person who not only studies the Bible, but correctly understands its principles, receives the approval of God. So we have a serious obligation to study God's word and rightly discern the correct principles and practices and then make a conscious decision to follow them empowered by the Holy Spirit. O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. How important is truth when it comes to studying the Bible? I would like to explain my answer through a simple analogy. Let's say there is a certain article of food that is damaging to your health, and you do not know it. When you consume that food, would it benefit your health or damage your health? Of course, it will damage your health even though you did not have prior knowledge. Now, what if you know that a certain article of food is damaging to your health and you still consume it? Would it benefit your health or damage your health? Of course, it will damage your health. So, whether you know the food will damage your health or not, it does not change the composition of the food. This same principle is true when it comes to misinterpretations of God's word. Many people sincerely believe falsehoods concerning the Bible, but this does not change the composition, the damaging effect that it will have on their spiritual life and their ability to rightly discern the character of God. Believing misconceptions about God cannot have any beneficial results. Did you know? that holiness is connected to truth? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, 
that they also might be sanctified through the truth. If sanctification comes to the word, and the word is truth, then sanctification can come only through the truth. There is no sanctifying power in error, even if you sincerely believed a lie. Case in point, Eve sincerely believed a lie. Was the outcome sanctification or condemnation? Sanctification does not come through lies, neither does it come through genuine or ingenuine misinterpretations of God's word. If we genuinely embrace misinterpretations of scripture, then it is God's prerogative to lead us to truth via Bible study, a sermon, a friend, or whatever means he may use. And it is our responsibility to study, investigate, and accept it. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the truth shall make you free, then what will lies do? Both cannot have the same results. One thing we should know about the truth is that truth does not lose its truthfulness under closer investigation. If what you believe is indeed truth found in God's word, then a closer look or cross-examining or taking more scriptures into consideration to evaluate a particular doctrine will not make it less truthful. On the contrary, it will make the truth shine brighter. It is a wise practice to routinely do an inventory on your beliefs. All our cherished opinions, long practice customs and habits should be brought to the test of scriptures. And if the word of God opposes our views, then we should not tear down the scriptures in order to make them seem to bear a testimony in favor of our errors. What is very, very important is for us to have the desire to know the truth even if it will hurt us and cause us to make hard decisions and sacrifices. We may lose family, friends, and maybe our job, but it is written. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. I am going to share with you one of the most impactful principles which I have learned. This principle has awakened my seriousness to investigate and find out what is biblical truth, regardless of my feelings, my friends, my family, and my traditional beliefs, regardless of any and everything. Listen to this carefully. We have power over what we believe, but what we believe has power over us. Think about it. Let me break it down for you. You have the power to choose whatsoever you want to believe. The choice is yours. But after that choice has been made, then that belief you have chosen will have the power over your life to shape it after the principles of that particular belief you chose. This is a very powerful fact and frightening at the same time. If we want our lives to be godly and to reflect the character of Christ, then it is imperative that we choose truth whenever we are convicted so that God's truth may be the governing principle in our lives. When we choose error, deliberate or deceive, those false principles and practices will surely distort our view of the character of God and tend to lead us away from Christ while thinking we are getting closer to Christ. Case in point, Martin Luther, the Protestant reformer in the 1500s, was a Catholic priest. He sincerely believed misinterpretations of God's word, which led him to climb steps on his knees to appease God. He had a false understanding of the character of God, which in turn shaped his lifestyle and practices. At that time, he believed salvation was a combination of faith and works. But you know what? As he climbed those steps on his knees, he heard a voice say to him, The just shall live by faith. Now, as I have said before, if we genuinely embrace misinterpretations of scripture, then it is God's prerogative to lead us to truth and it is our responsibility to study, investigate and accept it. When Martin Luther changed his belief, 
now anchored in the truth, it correspondingly changed his lifestyle and practices, this time in harmony with God's word. This decision led him to be pronounced a heretic, and he was brought before the religious leaders and council of high states in his day. At the trial, they asked him to recant his beliefs. With his life on the line, please listen to what this man had to say. By the mercy of God, I conjure you, most serene emperor, and you, most illustrious princes, and all men of every degree, to prove from the writings of the prophets and apostles that I have heard, as soon as I am convinced of this, I will retract every error and be the first to lay hold of my books and throw them into the fire. Is this the same for you today? What kind of weight does Bible truth carry in your life? Are you willing to say like Martin Luther, prove from the writings of the scriptures that I have heard and I will retract every error? But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. What is God actually expecting from us? as we study his word. It's unlocking the truths that are supposed to be the fruit of Bible study. Effective Bible study should lead to truth. Truth is not subjective. It remains truth under the most rigorous examination. The more we study, the more light is revealed, corresponding with a better understanding and appreciation of the character of God, which in turn, will guide our practices in harmony with his word. I hope you have seen that embracing false doctrines, deliberately or deceived, will have a negative effect on your spiritual life as it pertains to your picture of God and the practices that are not in harmony with his word. We must always remember, Satan's chief objective is to distort the character of God through lies. Why would that be his greatest objective? if it is not the one that has the greatest impact. When it comes to studying the Bible, truth matters. I hope this presentation has encouraged you to study or continue studying the Bible because we should be trained to be thinkers and not reflectors of other man's thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to ring the notification bell so you do not miss another episode of The Truth Unfolds.